This video will continue our discussion of conservative vector fields um, by determining if this field is conservative, and if it is, um, which it will be, we're going to find the poten potential function. This is going to work into a method that's coming up, so please take advantage of right now, because this is going to be like the first half of, um, actually it's more than that, much more than that, probably the first 80% of a problem is what we're about to do, what we're leading up to. All right, I want to check to see if these are conservative. Remember to check that. We label M and N. And then the partial of n with respect to x, it's the one that it's not with. Like i is typically the x component, right? That's how I think about it. m, I do it with the other one, which is y. And I just got to find those. So that's what I need to show. Um, so n with respect to x, okay, that's a 3. Um, if I do m with respect to y, I also get 3. Um, thus, f is conservative. All right, cool. We showed it was conservative. The reason we do that, did I spell that right? Yeah, okay. Um, the reason that we do that now is now I know there is a potential function. If it wasn't conservative, um, there is no potential function because that's the definition, right? Um, there is a potential function now that I have to find. Now, I want to remind you something. Let's take a function. Um, we'll call it phi. That's what we're going to call it most mainly here. And I know to get to f, I would take the gradient of phi, right? Um, let's go ahead and define. No, nope, we'll do that. Okay, the gradient of f is going to be the partial of phi with respect to x. And then the gradient uh, for the y component was the partial with respect to phi uh, with respect to y. That was our definition. Right, so I, I know this is equal to f, what I have right there. So what that means is the partial of phi with respect to x is actually the same thing as 3y minus x squared. I'm going to move this over. Well, if that's the same, then I know that the integral of phi with respect to x dx is going to be, well, that's, that's going to be phi. All right, so let me scoot this over, actually. Forgive me if you're fitting this in. I do move things around quite a bit. Phi is equal to that. Well, then I just take that function, 3y minus x squared, and I'm going to integrate with respect to x going backwards. So phi then, I'm going to go ahead and write xy here, is equal to, okay, if I do with respect to x, I got 3xy minus 1 third x cubed, and then now Instead of a plus c here, we actually have a function um, because it could have been in terms of y. So I'm going to put h of y instead of plus c because if it was a plus y squared and I took the derivative with respect to x, it's going to go away, right? So it's treated as a constant. Okay, well, I have that. I'm going to use this now. Um, I can find the, take, take my prime, my uh, phi there. And I'm going to take the derivative of phi with respect to the other function now. That's y. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's 3x. And it's with respect to y, so that middle term is gone. So I know this is equal to 3x plus h prime of y. That's just taking the derivative of what we just found here, right? this whole expression here, taking that derivative, and it gets me that. Well, if you remember, though, I also know that phi with respect to y is equal to n, right? That's the way that the potential function thing, right? This thing. So I can set these two things equal. And then n, I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to write n. I'm going to write what it is. That's really nice because there's 3x on both sides. That works out quite a bit. Um, notice that we only have terms of y. If I have terms of x, then I probably did something wrong. Um, we dealt with all the x's. Um, to get from h prime to negative y, we just integrate. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's one half negative one half y squared plus. Now we get a c. If you need to write out your integral, please please do. Uh, most of the time they are simple like that. Now I can actually write down my phi function. Phi of x y is equal to three x y minus one third x cubed plus h y. We just figured that out. Negative one half y squared plus c. There is my potential function. This is going to be very important later. Um, we're going to work this out, and we're going to use that, and it's going to actually make an integral integral very, very easy for us. Um, and we'll see that coming up. 
So right now you're just finding potential functions by integrating backwards and working through that. Um, use this as a template to get through the problem. It's very much the same. You could have started, instead of starting here, you could have started at uh, the uh, derivative of phi, uh, partial derivative of phi with respect to y. You could have started there and went the other way. We'll get you to the same place.